So today's the day, folks. We've been waiting quite a while, but iOS 15 is finally out. Now, I've been using the betas, both the developer and the public ones, since day one, literally June 7th, 2021, and I've been running it on my main device. A little risky, you might say, but I go all in on these things. So in today's video, we are going to talk about some of the little tips and tricks that I have found over the past couple of months that make life using iOS 15 just a little bit better and that you might find helpful too. So without any further ado, let's get started. So this is actually the first time that I've done a tips and tricks video for iOS. I've done a couple of these for macOS, but this year I had found enough things that I think it's worth talking about in a video form. And if you end up liking this video, definitely consider leaving a like down below and subscribing to let me know that you'd like to see more content like this in the future. So I think it's safe to say that iOS 15 this year is a more minor update than iOS 14 was last year. People are definitely less excited now than they were a year ago. But that being said, I do think that iOS 15 brings some really interesting new features. Although it's worth pointing out that not all of them are available yet for some reason. For example, Apple talked about the ability to add identification cards, such as a driver's license to the wallet app, but that is nowhere to be found yet. There's also features like the improved detail in maps. So far, that's basically just in the Bay Area, so unless you live there, then it probably doesn't matter to you. But today, we're not gonna focus on the stuff that we're still waiting on or is still being worked on. We're gonna talk about things right now that are already in iOS 15 that will make your life a little bit easier. And the first one of that is live text. This was a feature that Apple gave quite a bit of screen time to at WWDC. But something that you might not know about is that if you're going to paste text, whether it's in notes or messages or even a URL in Safari, oftentimes it'll allow you to scan text from the camera and just paste it directly in. So you don't have to like take a photo or open the camera app separately. You can just do it directly from the text field. That's a really useful feature and I think it's going to be very helpful. The second tip has to do with notification summaries. This was a new feature that Apple is rolling out now that basically allows you to silence your notifications and then you can choose times when you wish to be notified. Now you can actually have up to 12 notification summaries delivered at any point during the day and you can schedule exactly when those are down to the minute. It even lets you choose which apps you want to be notified of in the summary. So, for example, if you don't really care about checking your email in a notification summary because you do that regularly throughout the day, you can choose to have email notifications withheld from the summary. So, it kind of lets you pick and choose what you want to wait on, what you want to just check on yourself. Tip number three, in most cases where you can input an email address, so if that's signing up for a new service, if that's getting notifications from your recent Apple Store order of the iPhone 13, you can choose to hide your email and Apple will automatically generate a random email address, an alias if you will, and it'll forward whatever mail goes there to your real address. And so what that means is if you're signing up for something that you think is going to bombard you with spam emails, you can say, no, 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 you're not getting my real email address. And then you can just kind of cut them off if they're being annoying. And iOS 15 lets you do that right when you're signing up for something. So you don't have to remember to do anything. It'll just remind you with a nice little prompt and off you go. Tip number four, in FaceTime, you can now create a link, much like you can in apps like Zoom, to allow other people to join your scheduled FaceTime call. And what's really cool about this is that it actually allows you to have Android users and Windows users join your FaceTime call. Now, the caveat of this is that if you are on Android or your friends are on Android, they can't actually create a FaceTime call. You will still have to do it and just send them the link. What are you expecting them to make a FaceTime Android app? Come on, let's be realistic here. Still, even though Apple just can't give up control and let other people have a FaceTime app, they will at least let them join a FaceTime call. So I guess that's nice. All right, this next tip might be a little bit niche, okay? But I think it's actually pretty cool. 
In the Photos app, you can now view the EXIF data for photos taken on your phone in the default camera app. Exchangeable image file format lets you see all sorts of interesting information about the photo, including where it was taken, the resolution, the exact lens and settings of the lens inside the photo. It allows you to see a lot of really interesting information, and now you can do that directly in the Photos app instead of having to send it somewhere else to view that information. I imagine if you're the type of person who's really, really curious to try out the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max camera system with its added functionality, this is probably a feature that you'd be looking forward to. All right, next up for tip number six, we're moving over to Safari, which is, I think, the most important part of this update. That's certainly the one that I've noticed the most. I've really enjoyed the new FaceTime features, the new Maps features, and the new Focus Mode features, but the one that stands out to me the most is Safari. And the biggest one here is Apple deciding to move the default menu bar from the top to the bottom of the page. Now, over the various betas, this has changed a little bit. When Apple announced it at WWDC, it was this floating bar that looked very radically different from what we're used to, but as the betas rolled out over the summer, they've sort of refined it back to a pretty similar style to previous iOS versions, but it still retains a lot of the functionality that Apple was talking about at WWDC. I'm curious to know which you guys think looks better, the, the version of Safari that's launching right now with iOS 15, or what it looked like back in WWDC when we first got the preview. Let me know in the comments below. But the first tip for Safari is that you can now set a background, just like you could on Mac OS. If you have a blank tab, you can scroll down to the bottom, tap edit, and it allows you to pick a background. Now there are some backgrounds that are already available for you to choose from there, or you can upload your own. And this is just a nice little feature that makes it a bit more similar to Safari on the Mac. Honestly, I don't know why they didn't bring this to Safari on iOS earlier, but there you go, now you have it. Tip number seven, and I think this might be the most minor tip in this entire video, but my favorite out of all of them. With the menu bar on the bottom in the new Safari, you can swipe between tabs, which is honestly a really, really useful feature. You don't have to hit the little tab button to get out of there anymore. But one of my favorite things about that is that if you're on the last tab, you can swipe all the way over to the left to create a new tab instead of going out and then hitting the new tab button. This is a really nice little feature that I'm super glad Apple added. Honestly, it probably should have been easier to make a new tab in the past, but I'm glad that it's finally here. It makes it really easy to be on a website and just swipe over to have a new tab to go search something new. It's fantastic. Tip number eight is also in Safari. If you don't like having the menu bar at the bottom, let's say you're, you're so used to having the menu bar at the top that you're like, what the heck, why isn't it up there anymore? I miss it, I want it back. Well, guess what? You can have it back. If you tap the little AA button on the left, you can choose show top address bar, and then it basically goes back to old Safari. It looks almost identical. Now that also means that you lose those other features. For example, you can't swipe between tabs. You can't swipe off to the left to create a new tab. You do have to go into that tab icon menu. However, if you don't like the bottom address bar and you don't like any of those new features, you can basically just set Safari back to the way it has always been. So there you go. So the final tip that I have for you guys today is universal drag and drop. This one is really cool because basically what it allows you to do is you can long press on photos, videos, or files, and you can basically hold them there with one hand and then go into another app with the other hand and drop something straight away. It's fantastic. It means that if you want to send something that you've got saved in your iCloud drive to a friend on your phone, you can open the files app, find the file, hold it, drag it, send it. It's really, really easy and isn't something that I think a lot of people have really known about, but it's awesome. I love it. So those are all the iOS 15 tips and tricks that I have for you guys today. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. I'm also very curious if you guys think that iOS 15 is enough of an upgrade. I know some people have said it's pretty minor, some people have said it's incremental but pretty good. I'm curious to know your take, so leave that in the comments down below. And as usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.